That was a clip from The Last of Us Episode 1. Guys, if you've listened to any of this show so far, you know, the free, if you listen to the pilot or if you just talk to me in general, you know how much I've been looking forward to this. The Last of Us, my favourite video game of all time. I've been ready for this since before it's even been announced. I've been saying this is the new Game of Thrones. This is the story that's going to get everyone hooked. Um, And well, did it. That's what we're about to find out both this week and for the future weeks going forward. We're going to be covering it in depth. Um, Guys, if you're listening to wondering how we're going to be covering this and if you're like i don't know if i should follow it i haven't played the games or whatever i'll go through how we're going to go about spoilers on this okay so the people i'm about to talk to i've called up a couple of my friends uh they are both gamers they played the game um at least the first game we've already had a kind of a pre-discussion around differing opinions and different uh experiences with the second game and so on um so again with that like we will talk about it with that in mind but we also want to make it accessible to people that haven't listened, that haven't played the game before. So we want to use the fact that we played the game to increase or enhance your experience if you haven't, but we're not going to spoil it, okay? So if you've watched the first episode, you're good to go. We won't spoil anything further. If you haven't watched the first episode and you want to, stop now. Go watch the episode, come back to us, and we'll go through it, okay? But anyway, guys, uh, that's where we're going to go, and that's how we're going to treat spoilers for the duration of this show. Guys, my first guest is uh, when he's not supporting Kings of Leon as the basis for fan club. He can be found on Twitch, living his best life. I'm delighted to catch up with him. It is the one and only Kevin King. Kevin, how are you? How's it going, man? I'm good. Absolutely fantastic. Can I complain? On a Tuesday of all days. <laughs> on a Tuesday, I know. We're recording the worst this day of the Tuesday. week. I know. Well, look, we're making it into the best by making it our last. Exactly. exactly. This is what exactly. we do. This is how we get through the week. Tell well, me a bit about it. your own uh, your own Last of Us kind of origin story. Where are you at kind of with the, with the game? Did you play it when it first came out? Are you, like, because I, I know you as well, like kind of as, as a Resident Evil guy as well. So kind of talk yeah. me through that and your relationship between the two or, or, or her, so, whatever so your story is the game's like 2013 i think isn't it yeah, so i didn't have a playstation probably up till 2017 uh i think i got a, I treated myself to a playstation 4 i think it was in 2017 and it was only because the remake of resident evil 2 had come out and i was like nice. i have to play that yeah. so um it kind of just it was one of those games that i think was either given a loan to me because like I just have, I had friends that had tons of PlayStation 4 games, and that was always the one where like you have to play this one. You have if you've never played it, you don't know anything about it. You just have to just experience it going blind. And I was I knew nothing about it. I'd been out for what four five years ish around that time, and I knew nothing and was just blown away by the story and the atmosphere. And it kind of scratched the itch of after I finished the of Resident Evil and probably Resident Evil Seven was it around then too. So it kind of that that kind of horror survival horror itch. Um, yeah, so that that was uh that's that was kind of my my foray into it, but just blown away by the story though. It's yeah. like it's just incredible. Um, and I've gone back and played. Did you play Factions at all? I have on the Last of Us, the oh, multiplayer part. No, I haven't played that, but um, I um, it is. I'm I'm kind of saving it. If that makes like, sense. <laughs> like lockdown, we we spent months playing that Factions part, and like it was like it's years old, but you can still go back to it and have like an yeah. absolute blast in it as well. So um, yeah, just the gameplay and stuff as well, and just the, the stealthy part of it, or the lack of as well, however you want to play it. Um, going off, going home. So uh, yeah, I loved it. Resident Evil or Last of Us, if you have to choose. Not Resi all the way. I'm like, yeah, and it's yeah, it's yeah. this it's it's tough watching the episode last night, having watched Netflix's absolute shocker of a show, and then um. Oh, that the the Welcome to Raccoon City movie that came out yes. as well. We were like, oh, it's it's just it, that's how that should be, this something like a video game should be done. Is last night's episode, and you're watching that TV show, that Netflix show, and the movie, and you're like, oh my god, what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's sickening, but yeah, it's, uh, it's I'm still resi all the way though. Okay, okay, interesting. I mm. I The Last of Us has converted me, but I grew up my first proper game game was Resident Evil uh, Director's Cut, like the first one on yeah. PS1. Like, so yeah, I, I do share that affinity, but Last of Us kind of won me over with that. Uh, next up is a man who used to be associated with a golden can in a previous life as the Ballymun Bruiser. Uh, now he's a resident Joel of the group. He's the girl dad <laughs> expert. Um, <laughs> known more for carrying around a boppy than a 
Golden Khan. It is another Kev, uh, Kev Metcalf. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Sad days, what's a crack, lads? How are you? <laughs> Kev, what's your Kevin? Uh... There can only be one Kevin, so we're gonna have to fight to the death. So you can schedule in for That's... next week and yeah. separate Zoom <laughs> meeting or whatever we do for it. Cage match. Yeah, <laughs> we can get something going. I was um, thinking. Just... Uh... I was thinking yeah. about this though as well. Is there anything more white boy than d- doing a podcast with a Jared and two Kevins breaking down the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> On a Tuesday night, yeah, here's, what, that, yeah. here's what I do uh, in the zombie apocalypse. What would you do, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> Can we wrap this up? I've got a canting glass in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think what we'll have to do is I'm gonna. I never call you this like out, like in real life, but I'm gonna call you Bruiser. I will call Kev. Kev, is that okay? Do you hear that, that? Kevin? You're the bruiser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that's a good name. <laughs> yeah, sound, whatever works. Bruiser, what's your kind of last of us origin story? Um, yeah, so I, I'm an Xbox guy. Oh, I was an Xbox guy. Uh, Xbox, the original one, the 360, all of it. I had a PS2, but then I stopped for years. Uh, when the last of us came out, though, I caught me eye. I looked class, read it was a Sony exclusive. Uh, I actually borrowed a PlayStation 3 from Sean Coffey. No, and mutual friend. It, and bought it in a bought it in a GameStop just so I could play it. Gave Sean the game afterwards when I was finished. I only kept it for about a week or so. And uh, yeah, killed it. Loved it. Couldn't believe it. Me missus and all was watching, the, watching me play it because she was so into the story and involved in it. Now, she didn't watch the whole lot of it, but she watched a lot of it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it was just one of those... <laughs> In in uh, enticing games, you just got caught up in the whole story. You went with it from start to finish. The gameplay at the time was very good. I went back and kind of replayed it, and then replayed the mastered version. And it, obviously, it's a bit slow and clunky at times, but it's still a, a good game, you know. And it, it still holds up in my mind. But story was, I didn't encounter that ever like that. Like, and I, I kind of grew up with Resident Evil, like yourself, and me and you have had countless conversations about it, and we've played it a quite a couple yes. of times. But um, to me, it's night and day. It's it, 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 the, the, between the story and the gameplay. It's so much quicker. It's so it's it's so it's so much more free flowing. You know, it, it's just a much better game in my mind. And and obviously, I actually liked Welcome to Raccoon City, but with the exception of that, everything else has been absolute <laughs> shit. So it is good yeah. to see. You know, so the last one has to be on pretty much everything in my mind. Yeah, we. I think we could do a separate Welcome to Raccoon City podcast, and I think there there might be there may be an audience for that. We might do a special one day because I I also liked it, uh, yeah, and I remember. Oh, uh, I can be the, I can be the counterpoint. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right, I remember yeah. we had these debates around the time though. Uh, but yeah, no, look, we're here to discuss the last Real. of us anyway. So here's what we're gonna do. Every week, I'm gonna give you guys a kind of recap just so we know kind of what we're discussing and kind of bring us back into the episode that just happened, and then we're just gonna have a chit chat around it and give our own thoughts, Easter eggs, and stuff like that. And what we notice as gamers like i said don't worry we're not going to spoil anything from the game we might allude to things but again we're not going to give any plot points away so you are safe if you're uh if you haven't played the game so we're going to start with the recap and what happened anyway as we go into the spoiler verse with the last of us episode one and basically the first episode of the show began with a 1960s tv talk show interview with an epidemiologist warning of the danger of fungal pandemics like he was a massive hipster he's like oh you like your uh, viral pandemics do you <laughs> oh my god yeah that's cool i'm more of a fungal guy but whatever you like is fine like this was uh i don't know if you remember guys this is a really weird level to play in the game uh for those of you who never played it you were just playing as a tv host you were smacking your secretary's arse and walk as you walk by saying the word tuts a lot it was very very strange and off beat but look it worked in the show a lot better i guess uh cut to me jumping in the air for joy is the familiar strings of gustavo santaya epic last of us team song played to the opening credits it was kind of like Game of Thrones in a way, except the map was your if the map was your face and the castles were a piece of, piece of fungus penetrating your skin. Um, we moved to September 2023, September 2003, 20 years ago. Birdie Ahern is T-Shock. Shake Your Tail Feather is the number one song. The rundown is top of the box office. And in Boston, where the show is set, the New England Patriots had just won their first Super Bowl thanks to the new quarterback, Tom Brady. So basically, it was perfect conditions for the world to end. Sarah, played by Nico Parker, 
character who fun fact is actually the daughter of Tandy Newton who plays Maeve on Westworld for any Westworld fans out there uh, wakes up and makes breakfast for her dad Joel uh, before he goes to work with his brother Tommy she goes about her day as weird stuff seems to happen around her like a watch repair shop she's in closes in a rush at 3.15 as sirens go off in the background then after spending some time with her neighbours later that night her and Joel watch a movie as he gets home from work Easter egg time the movie they watch is actually Curtis and Viper 2 which is discussed in the Last of Us Part 2 video game as Joel's favourite movie no spoilers on who discussed or how it was discussed but it is mentioned in the video game so first little Easter egg they've thrown in there for us Tommy asked, uh, calls to ask Joel to bail him out for getting into a bar fight, leaving Sarah to wake up alone in the house as the shit really begins to hit the fan. She searches the house for Joel in the scene. Gamers have all have burned into their memories at this stage. The dog from next door, Mercy, startles her, leading her to check on the neighbors only to find the elderly infirm Granny here earlier on had, had, had uh, peeked out on mushrooms, uh, which was terrifying behind her. Uh, the Granny was eating the faces off the rest of them in the kitchen and not in the copper's way of force. Joel, Tommy and Sarah uh, panic and drive into the city after Joel stops to kill the granny and while in the city they go into the shops uh, looking to stock up on a lot of toilet roll. No, not, not really. That didn't really happen because that would be a stupid, insane thing to do in the middle of the apocalypse. Anyway, afterwards, uh, shortly, a child died. Uh, no, it was very sad. Uh, as the city devolves into chaos uh, with the infection wreaking havoc, Sarah and Joel get cornered by a soldier who is ordered to shoot on sight. Tommy saves the day, but it's too late as Sarah is hit and dies in a devastated Joel's arm. It, Joel's arms, not one arm. That'd be weird if he was just carrying it one. It wouldn't help. Uh, cut to 2023 in an, uh, an apocalyptic landscape that laughs at us for moaning about how had how we had to watch so much Netflix and queue for the shops in our pandemic. Then Joel, the Joel we meet in this timeline is very different as he has no qualms disposing of the body of an infected child who was put down upon testing positive while entering the quarantine zone uh, and Joel, uh, that Joel now resides in and he also deals drugs to a crew corrupt Fedra officer. There he lives with Tess, who we meet as having recently been roughed up by local scumbag Robert and his cronies who had stolen a battery on them. Losing a battery enrages Joel in a way that carrying the corpse of a child the day beforehand just couldn't. He is such a dad. He really, really is. He's like, yeah, dead corpse of a child. I lost a battery. I'm going to kill someone. He genuinely looked like he was going to kill someone for losing a battery. It was insane. He's a, he's a monster. We meet Ellie, a teenage girl who's been locked up in a room by the Fireflies led by Marlene who's played by Merle Dandridge who's actually the same person who played her in the game um, Ellie is a bit of a shit troop be told when we meet her who doesn't stop being a whiny little teen until Marlene gives her her pocket knife which is of course what every teenage girl wants in 2023 Joel and Tess eventually find Robert with a bullet in his face and their battery uh, the hallway is strewn with bodies but Joel is just delighted because he's got a battery back it's like he doesn't even notice the bodies he's like battery amazing um, and the only people alive in the hallway where Marlene, another firefly, and the person Pedro Pascal lays his eyes on that's gonna change his character's life forever. Baby Yoda. Oh no, sorry, that's the wrong Pedro Pascal uh, saves a kid show. It's actually Ellie. Uh, Marlene, who's been shot in the firefight, asked him to smuggle Ellie out of the zone. Ellie explores Joel's home and deciphers a radio code that he, he has that means an 80s song uh, being played means trouble. Typically, the 80s usually means cocaine, but that's okay. Whatever. You've got your own code. That's your right. Uh, that night, they sneak out of the zone, breaking curfew under the cover of darkness, but are caught by Joel's drug dealer, soldier pal from earlier. He scans them at gunpoint, but Ellie panics and stabs him threatening them with a gun Joel gets about a PTSD and goes crazy murdering the soldier Marlene then realises that Ellie had tested positive Ellie explains that she was bitten weeks beforehand but hadn't turned in the panic they head off into the night as the camera pans back to take in the beautiful chaos that the quadriceps infection has inflicted upon the Boston landscape as Joel's radio goes off and the pest mode sing I'm taking a ride with my best friend to bring in the credits on episode 1 of The Last of Us guys that's the episode. So we'll start off with Kev. What was your general overall first impressions? I think we got a bit of an insight into how you felt about the show. We won't get into the whys yet because we'll kind of piece them apart bit by bit. But your overall general first impressions of uh, episode one. Uh, as I think just uh, as a gamer, probably more than anything else and seeing how close it was to the game. Uh, and seeing, I think for one of the first times, a video game being properly brought to life on screen in a really good way, 
it it was just I had a bit smile on my face the entire time. There's like, if if I was if I watched it on my own, but if I was sitting next to somebody, I'd just be kind of turning around probably every five minutes, being like, ah, ah, it's the thing. <laughs> But uh, I absolutely adored it. Yeah, it was it was great. The atmosphere, the 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 acting as well, the, and the and the actors they they have to play these characters is just phenomenal. Like as well, it's 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 excellent. So uh, yeah, I loved it. And um, we can get into the, into the the whys and stuff, I suppose, later. But yeah, my big big fan of it though. Um. Yeah. Totally agree. Um. Mm. It's it, it was phenomenal, and just to see that played out, it was literally like I was the Leonardo DiCaprio meme from The Wolf of Wall Street the entire time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just everything. Yeah. But yeah, they got it so right. Um. While also kind of adding their own innovations. Uh, Bruiser, what about yourself? General <laughs> overall vibes on on. Yeah, I, I I thought the opening scene uh, with the the scientists arguing was done really well. I love the fact we've seen that lad from the mummy in it. Remember him? The very annoying yeah, guy from John, the mummy. John Hanna. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was it was just really nice. I thought it was starting off on a good foot. Going into it, they they set it all up really well. The relationship between uh, Joel and his daughter and everything else. And then slowly but surely, yeah, it just really what what they really sold me on it was do you remember the scene with the the granny? Yes, the yeah. and they're in the she's just borrowing the DVD. And the granny's being freaky as shit behind yes. her. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. Like, I'm, I'm invested now. Because I know there's going to be a torn. I know this little creepy L one is going to kill someone. And this is this is what I'm here for. So, yeah, it, it sold me on that. It latched me in there. and It was fully on from there. It's interesting that we all refer to kind of getting the recognizing things from the show. And that's kind of cool. But the things that we're speaking about now are things that weren't in the game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, yeah. the little additions that they have, and that's so rare because I think that's been the risk with games. I think that's why so many creative properties have overthought the adaptations yeah. of video games because they're like, we either have to be ridiculously faithful or we have to go a completely different way. And you can actually point it. We spoke about Resident Evil earlier, but you can spoke to you can point to both Welcome to Raccoon City and to the Netflix show as yeah. exa- of both sides. Welcome to Raccoon City is trying to be ridiculous ridiculously faithful but also on the other side Netflix is trying to be completely original and they can't please either whereas this I think just got the balance right it just got the like we're gonna just pepper in extra bits so yeah. that yeah, they, gives... ex- they expanded on it lovely like they thought about it you know they put some process into it and goes what can we do here you know there's next door neighbours how can we make them loving and caring for her but at the same time the complete demise of the of her you know that way like yeah. and that's what they tied in really well but again it's it's careful thoughtful preparation you know yeah. it, it wasn't you... just throw money at it and go let's just go with this it was clearly they they clearly dissected the game and slowly added in things you in can see mind. that so craig mazin the person who made chernobyl is co show running this with neil Druckmann, who's the creator of the last of us game so you have the creator in the mix here um and craig Dr- craig mazin like he would pitch these things but he's a fan of the game and he loves and adores the game and that's what got Neil Druckmann to kind of sign up to this um, because he heard that Craig Madsen basically idolised him for making the game um, so you can see that attention to detail and that care that they put in but also like they're adding value with these extra things we didn't see the neighbours like the first time we saw the neighbours was in the game was when they like Sarah's looking around the house and that scene and then the one of the neighbours just comes in through the door and Joel immediately shoots them. So that's the yeah. first time we didn't know their personalities. This time the fleshed out part of it allowed us to do so because for reasons they have to change the nature of the show uh, for reasons we'll discuss. But before we kind of get into the individual plot points, I want to get again just a more general thought. Well, Sarah, you, Bruiser, like your thoughts on kind of Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey as Joel and Ellie. I know in particular there was a lot of hesitation around Bella Ramsey just because she looks very different to the Ellie we all know, whereas Joel and out of the game and Pedro Pascal look quite similar. You could see it instantly. Uh, Bella Ramsey had a bit of a higher hill to climb, but what are your first impressions of both? Um, the only process I had with, with uh, Bella Ramsey, is that what you said her name yeah. was? Yeah. So she's obviously fantastic. She's great. It doesn't matter to me that she looks like the character or anything like it. She played such an annoying little brat in Game of Thrones that it's ever hard. Like, if you're that good at a character, as a character actress or actor, and you were. Uh, you have a lasting impression with me. How am I now to go from wanting that bitch dead <laughs> to absolutely willing 
to lay down my life to keep her alive. That's my only struggle with it. I'm sure I'll get to see it more and more. It wasn't a great opening. Uh, you know, obviously she's quite nervous. She's quite worried. You know, she's a teenager. She's in a lot a horrible situation. So she's very annoying. So she wasn't that likable. You know that way. So it's gonna be hard for me to know that she is the main character and she is a likable character. To just let that go. Joel's great. Hey Tommy. Hey who they picked for Tommy. Hey. Hate him. I hate okay, him. Want him dead. Uh, he's not Tommy. Tommy's a rugged badass. Uh, he's not Tommy. He's just some lad that works. I feel like they picked him up. You know the lads that stand outside Home Depot looking to walk and get in the back of your pickup truck? Yeah. That's him. Right? That's who he looks like. That isn't Tommy. Tommy's a badass. This guy ain't no badass. That's my thoughts on him. That's the only thing I disagreed with anyway. I, 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 interesting points there. I think I agree with your first off. I, I never heard people describe Leanna Mormont as that bitch. Like, yes, same. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I have you on. This is why I just want the wild left takes. But amazing. Um, but like, I agree. Ellie is quite dislikable now. I think she needs to be because, again, kind of at the start of the game, when you first encounter Ellie you do kind of see her as cargo and you're like, why, why are they doing this? What's the deal? And she's cheeky and she's, and then it's everything else. And kind of, we've seen that there is, um, if you look closely at the trailers, you see a clip of the downloadable content extra left behind from the video game. That's going to be a part of it. And they're already kind of talking about elements from that, which we won't obviously get into. Um, but that's going to do a lot for fleshing out because that tells you Ellie's full story and how she is and why she is the way she is. And you understand exactly why Ellie is Ellie to the point that when the second game came out, people were so overprotective of Ellie. They was like, she was like our daughter. You know what I mean? Um, So with that, then I think they will get there. I like the way she's kind of, she's very good at being cheeky. She's very good at being a little shit, but also you can see, and they, they just haven't, her character just hasn't got a chance to get there, but you can see little bits of charm. Like, do you know the bit where she's like, she cracks the code and she kind of goes, I knew it, 80 me 80s means trouble. And then yeah. like, she just kind of gives that little bit of smile and then a wink and it's like, okay, I'm going to like you. And I'm going to, I, I, I'm confident you're going to get me there. The Tommy one is very interesting. The, and, and I agree with you. I wasn't a big fan of Tommy in this because first off, they made him a fuck up. Like, Tommy in the game does not get arrested. That's not a thing. Joel goes missing because obviously shit starts hitting the fan and that's when Sarah wakes up. Um, but they needed a contrivance to get Sarah alone in the house. Uh, and that's fine. I don't mind that side of it. But Tommy isn't a fuck up. Tommy, if anything, is the responsible brother. Joel you've is the fuck like up. Tommy. You know, yeah. You've got to like Tommy to like this journey. You yeah. know that way? If yeah. you don't want to see that, that connection being made, that you're not going on that journey. You know, that way, like, in the game, why would we care about getting back to Tommy? Yeah, why would we care about dropping this package off on the way to Tommy? Fuck Tommy. Fuck that Tommy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. stay in the city you're in. There's no need to go there. But, yeah. uh, look, maybe you'll grow on me as well. It's just that initial thought because from the start and the the, the kind of prologue, isn't it? Or, yeah, yeah. The, the opening moments of that game. It, and then, then it goes, skips 20 years. You're like, oh, here, where's Tommy? I want to see Tommy again. He was good. He helpful, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah I just feel it's missing with mm. him. But look, I could be wrong. He'd probably grow me. I love him in five episodes time, you know? No, I agree. He's a badass. Tommy is the guy who shields you when you're, you know what I mean? And they kind of cut that out again. I don't mind the fact that they cut that part out. I don't mind the changes that they made. So I'm not criticizing them for that. But in the game... Tommy runs ahead of you to kind of get rid of the infected so that you can, you've got a path to run through while you're carrying El or while you're carrying Sarah. So yeah, he's a badass and he's responsible and he jumps into danger to protect others. Like that's an important thing. Whereas I think the Tommy we got so far and they've loads of time to change this because we only got a tiny bit of Tommy so far, yeah. but yeah. it's, it, they made him a bit of a fuck up and that's different. The one thing I will say is his voice is very much Tommy. Like when you hear him on the phone, you're like, that's Tommy. That's exactly how Tommy sounds. So you got the voice right, if nothing else, which gives me kind of faith. Uh, Kev, your own thoughts and imp initial impressions on on Pedro Pascal, Bella Ramsey, but also any any other casting um, um, choices. Pedro Pascal was just perfect, yeah. absolutely. Uh, like if you, we, we've all we all agree, like he's just amazing, like kind of casting and kind of just really just got the spirit of Joel. Like looks very very similar in terms of in terms of a character as well. I loved Bella Ramsey as as Elle, and I thought it's it's a different portrayal 
Because I think when you meet Elle in the game first, she's a bit more reserved. She's a bit more timid. But then also this Bella Ramsey version of Ellie, she's grown up in this apocalypse for like all of her life. And she's like chained against her will in this room. She's going to be a little shit. And I loved that about her personality, I think. Um, and like you said as well, like there was more. She she gets like these cheeky little winks when she figures, figures out the code and stuff as well. Um, and I think, yeah, we're, we're you're going to get to like her a lot more. But I did love the fact that they made No, I, I wouldn't even call her unlikable, just a cheeky little shit. Yeah. And I, I love that about it. Um, Tommy, I I don't think we've seen enough of him to 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 really judge that, judge, judge that too much. Like, I, I'm I don't know. I'm, I'm not like a massive uh, into into uh, Tommy's character, I suppose. I just don't really. I haven't played the game now in a while, but I don't really remember Tommy that well. Um, or it's like as, as a proper standout character to me. But uh, I we'll see how it kind of goes as as it, as it kind of goes on. But um, yeah, I loved I loved Bella Ramsey her portrayal of this. Um, I also thought, uh, Sarah, getting to spend some time with Sarah. Um, was great. Yeah, I thought I really liked that about giving her a bit more. Just, just so you can spend a bit more time with her, because in the game it's it's quite brief at the start. But then getting to spend some time with her, kind of going about her day, you need you need that a little bit more because it's quite it's quite quick even in the game as well, and it's an impactful death and stuff as well. But you need because it's TV, they have a bit more time to play around with that as well and to get to know her a bit more. Um, I thought she had the same kind of energy as as the uh the game character i think as well i think she was quite likable and just sweet and stuff as well so uh yeah i liked i liked that about the start also the the opening bit at the start with the interview if we can get back to that was yep. terrifying in in like the best way where you're like the 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 cordyceps is a, a real life fungus that affects ants and the, that line of the earth getting warmer it was just like oh and it's like back in the 1960s and it's just like oh fuck it just brought that more like this realism i think to it um also the opening scene was uh oh it's that guy because as i mentioned it was john hannah and then you got yeah. josh brenner as well as the host who if you watch mythic quest is the young cw yeah and uh yeah i love i just love that opening to really set a tone for what this is of like oh this could happen like and and did we all go to Google and like be terrified by the fact that yes, that's true. Like what he said is true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's scientific, and like that just really brings it home. There was a lot of that though, because and, and I agree, I loved the opening. Uh, like if you listen to the Last of Us HBO podcast, it is uh, the two creators. So you have Craig Mazin, Neil Druckmann, and they're being interviewed by the actor who played Joel in the game. So he still has a connection to this, which I love. So it's great. Amazing. It's really worthwhile listen. And you get a lot of Easter eggs in there. And this is, and you get kind of a feel. It really reassures you as a gamer as well that they're going to handle this right because you know they are gamers and so on. So in this, for example, Craig Mazin had to pitch the opening scene twice to Neil Druckmann. And it makes sense because for me, when I first saw the opening scene, I'm like, this is bold because I mm. arguably The Last of Us in itself, the the open scene is is Sarah, and that's kind of what how we are introduced to Last of Us, and that's a cold open in itself. It's arguably the best cold open in the history of story, ever. It could genuinely have that, and they went against that, and they go into something else. But I got it when I, in perspective, I got it because if they'd had that as like because the way the game opens is they go through all of that story with Sarah, and then as she gets shot, the opening credits go on, and it makes you go, "That's just a, like you're broken as a human being." Yeah. The first time you play it, you're actually broken, sobbing, whatever. You, you're you're mentally shattered, and then the credits come on. And you're like, that's the start, <laughs> and it really <laughs> has this hugely powerful effect. So I'm like, are they gonna do that? And then when they didn't, I'm like, oh, that's a ballsy decision. But then they spent so much more time with Sarah, and we really got to fall in love with her, and really got to understand kind of what drives emotionally Joel to emotionally go along. With what to what's to come, so I really appreciated mm. that. Yeah. One thing I kind of want to touch base with you guys on is we see the beginning of a global pandemic here and the fear and everything that came in. I joked about it a bit in the recap, 
But how did that sit with you? Did that give you a bit of March 2020 PTSD? Did it hit home? Was it uncomfortable to watch, Kev? How, how did all that settle with you, considering we've been through something n- not to that extreme, but not dissimilar within the past few years? It's, it's well, it was, it was shit at the fan, like, wait, yeah, in the yeah, show. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose it, it kind of, yeah, you can kind of compare it a little bit, yeah, but it's, I think it's just the fact that it was just instant chaos so quickly in this. It was when I remember, like, we were, we were in recording in the studio in Wales back when the in 20, 2020, in January 2020, and you'd be hearing like little bits and pieces. On, on the news and the radio about like this virus in China and you're like it's never gonna fucking come here and then as as time went on over the next week weeks and then months it, it made its way here and I love the fact that like you were getting those little bits and pieces and you'll see like maybe police cars just drive by in the background and it's building up that tension so yeah it, you can relate to that a little bit of of uh just just hearing just bits in the background and then your your the, the your anxiousness I suppose is kind of building up so yeah there is there is that there yeah it was uh that was quite well done they they did that part and I'm only thinking about this and appreciating it as you're saying it now they did that part very well where it's like kind of um you know, there was like little bits on the radio that they hear and like you hear Sarah's like, should we be worried about this? Yeah, what's going yeah. On? And everyone else is like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You know, and that's kind of the way we were. You know, We're just mean? completely like, so, ignoring it like yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, it's coming for us. This can happen and it's going yeah. to happen. And we know from the cold open that it's going to happen. It's going to be bad. Uh, Bruce, your own thoughts on, on kind of that and the build up and the like, again, we can kind of contrast that because we've lived through something not 100%. Yeah, no, no, very, very similar to Kev there. Uh, it's... It, I do imagine if, if we had something as aggressive as what's happening in The Last of Us, we would fucking all react the same way. We'd be shoving people off. You know what I mean? Like, I'd definitely run over some fuckers. You know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> I, I get it. Like, uh, yeah, I, th- I think it was done well. I do really like the fact that it was happening in the background. That watch scene to me is huge. The fact that the woman's mm. trying to push, uh, push her out of the shop. Like, you can't fix it. You don't have time to fix it. Just shut the fuck up. We're going here. It's over. You know, and a, a clueless guy who's going like, what? what do you mean? Like, let me walk here. We're open for another three hours or some shit. You know, and uh, so that, that was well done. Just the fact that you could see some people start to panic. Like, no, so stuff's real here. How, how are we going to get out of here? The only thing I, I, I probably... Uh, didn't like about it was the fact that when the phone call happened to Joel that he left Sarah uh, and just put her to bed like that I don't think anyone in there would ever do that regardless of having any idea of how it is because she is only a kid and if she wakes up she's frightened and all that other shit but everything else up to that I thought was really well done and then again obviously as the shit hits the fan and they're driving around and the cop cars are everywhere and there's army barracks and all and it's like well would have happened that fast, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of leaves you think, but no, it was good. It was good, yeah, and yeah, the we shut up shop so quickly that I imagine it would sh- go to shit very quickly if it was a real, you know, aggressive people are dropping dead and being ripped apart situation. That's yeah. actually a very good point of how quick we did shut down on 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 that day. Um, so yeah, of of stuff kind of just really hitting the fan like that. You touched on a um, couple I, of really I, interesting points there. Like, cause sorry, I, I, I don't need to cut you off, but I just want to kind of acknowledge like <clears throat> the stuff that I really don't think if we'd have watched this in 2019, I don't think that watch scene would have hit as hard. But we mm. lived scenes like that where like it's like one person's like, we need to shut the shop, and the other person's like, What are you talking about? And we're like, yeah. I know that that that's we're doing a the uh, DiCaprio meme there as well. So that's that's really good. Sorry, Kevin, I didn't mean to cut across. Just just as a as a Maybe a little nitpick of when when Sarah does wake up, she's very calm. I kind of think, uh, considering all the shit that's going on, like there's big green flashes and stuff as well. I kind of feel like you'd be a bit more panicked. Maybe she's quite calm, just like looking for Joel. I kind of feel like, um, but that's funny. Yeah, I've, ne- I've never I've never met a cool or twelve year old or whatever bleeding age she is like. Yeah, you know, and who goes outside to check? Like, no, come here, listen, love. You need a lesson, all right? You yeah, stay in that mercy, house. mercy was sick. No, I'd have gone out after mercy. Like, uh, like it's, yeah. there's a dog that needs help. That there. dog could have bleeding dying on the street, out and locked the safety in my bedroom. <laughs> um, yeah, you touched on something there, Bruiser, that I kind of wanted to pick your brains on anyway, because when you're commenting on like Joel leaving Sarah there. 
you can tell you're a dad. You know what I mean? And that's <laughs> that's that coming into play where you're like, that would never happen. You would never it do wouldn't. That. You shouldn't. Like, and I so, don't think it would happen. I think it was obviously done for dramatic effect. There's no way you wouldn't have. I'm not saying I wouldn't leave a 12 year old alone like that at night to sleep because I'm sure she would have been fine, but you wouldn't have just put her to bed and disappeared, especially as a single father. Like, you just wouldn't. You'd be like, look, fucking gotta go collect your, your uncle. His car broke down, if you don't want to say he's a drunk Asia. Hey, Tommy. Uh, if you don't want to say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could give any excuse. His car broke down. I'm gonna go get my hands. You go by the bed. Everything will be all right. I'm on the other end of the phone if you need me. You know, that type of shit. How, you wouldn't how did- go without giving a warning. How did this hit you though, as a girl dad now? Because obviously you're you're in a very different life position. I, 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 I tell you one thing: to when you I, played the game originally, from, from that opening scene and what happened with that uh, the, the shooting scene of the the daughter, yeah, to when the gun is then pointed at Ellie and he freaks out, that would a hundred percent and a thousand percent happen in 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 my life. If you were put back in that situation. If everything you absolutely lived for was taken away from you, some from, from you know a similar angle, someone pointing a gun, you see it again, you ain't gonna get let it let it happen twice. Even though he's not that connected at all to Ellie, it's just a natural instinct, I think, to defend uh, when you were met with the exact same situation that crippled you and took away all of your life. You know that way, and it would have like Joel's dead inside, and that's what you need to realize now. It's twenty years on, all he's got left is his brother. He is. Nothing. He is a shell of a human being. He is just moving on for the sake of moving on. He doesn't want to move on. He doesn't. He only wants to see his brother again. You know what I mean? He he doesn't. He doesn't care or give a shit about anything. As you, as someone, I don't know if it was you or Kev earlier on talked about how he, he's fine throwing the body in. He, he's fine trying. You know, afterwards, he's, Doing twenty things. years later, he's no problem. Yeah, he's no problem it's throwing the body in. He doesn't care. exactly. He's he's been destroyed. You know, and that's part of the journey here is building them back up into a human being again. Yeah, yeah. And and that happened, obviously, look, that's why Sarah's death was so important to show because we need to understand and relate it and empathize in the way that you just have there. Uh, to, and, and also as well, like, we're going we're gonna to see some shit. We know this. We're going to see some shit over the next few weeks. And we're going to see Joel make some decisions that are going to be very different watching as a passive observer than as someone actively making those choices as the gamer, as playing as Joel. So it's going to, we need to under, it's very important that we need to understand Joel's mindset and how he feels and sympathize with him there. And that comes from seeing Sarah's death and that scene needing to be powerful. Obviously we spoke about the effect that it had on us when we played it in the game. Kev, how do you feel that the TV show side of it played up to things? Do you feel that they they handle it well against the game? There's obviously a lot of side by side. I don't know if you've seen the side by side comparisons. How do you feel that they that, did they get it right or did they miss things? Did the game hit more? What what are your own thoughts? Oh, it still drew a tear. Every time I see it in the game, it'll draw a tear. I did the same last night as well. It's still the same impact. And I think, like I was saying earlier, it's the spending that bit of time with her and kind of just really getting to know her and then her spending time with the neighbors and stuff as well. You needed that, I think, for the TV show. Um, and it's still, I think, just as impactful to me. I loved, absolutely loved the the, the time he spends even in the truck escaping as well. That state, the camera just staying in the truck from her perspective, I think, um, yeah. and seeing all this shit, it's kind of puts the her fear in you then as well. And then the added plane that just gets brought down and explodes. And that's what knocks out the car is like a slightly different thing to the game. Um, And everything from her, her ankle then being broken and, and him just desperate, not even trying to fight off, just running to get, to get, uh, to get her to safety as well. Um, And then there's the tragedy of it then as well. I thought it was just as impactful as, as the, as the game was. Yeah. There's a Last of Us game podcast that I listen to as well. Can you tell I'm obsessed? Um, yeah. but there's a podcast, and I found it really interesting when I listened to it a, a couple of years ago, um, where they spoke about the direction that Neil Druckmann gave Troy, I want to say, Baker, um, when he was playing Joel in that, because he went in and he said it was one of the hardest days in the actor. I just broke down completely, sobbing and this and that and the other. And then the next day he came in and Neil was like, so we need to get that scene again. And he's like, what the fuck? I have given you absolutely everything that I have. And he's like, yeah, you did. And it was horrific and awful. But the problem was you were sad. And it's like, that's not how you'd feel in this scene. 
you'd feel like you're trying to fix everything and you're trying to put it back together. But what makes the scene sad is that it's so unfixable. And they changed it slightly here, but I feel they had the benefit of Neil Druckmann having given that direction and known that journey that the actor's going to go on and being able to hammer it home. Because for me in this scene, this broke me yet again. And I didn't expect it to break me. I expected to look back with a kind of, I expected to look at it with a critical eye, but it absolutely broke me and had an emotional impact because Pedro Pascal leaned into that trying to fix it part. Mm. You know what I mean? Right up until the end, he's cradling Sarah in his arms. Tommy's like, holy shit, he's not responding. You know what I mean? And that's happening. And he's, the, what he's doing physically acknowledges that she know he knows she's dead, but he's still being like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to get you. Come on, just move, just move. And he keeps saying those things over and over. And that's what makes it horrific. It breaks you because th- that's real. That's what you'd actually be like. You know what I mean? You're, you're not accepting it and you're just not going to process it. You're just going to be like, I need to fix this. I need to protect you. Even when it's that horrific moment. And that takes us into his mindset so much. So for me, I don't want to say it was better than the game. I don't think anything can have that visceral reaction that playing this for the first time had. But I think if I hadn't watched it, and I don't know, again, feel free to join in people who haven't played the game, listening and, and tell me how you felt. If I hadn't watched the game, though, I think I'd have had a similar reaction to how I did when I played the game, which is huge because when you play the game, you're you're as the characters. So you feel very attached to them very, very soon because you're played as them and you've lived as them and you've walked literally in their shoes. Um, but I think they got there with how, before, how powerful this was. Uh, Bruiser, what, what are your own kind of vibes on that? Oh, very similar. You hit, you hit pretty much all of it. I would say the game took me in more but probably because you are playing the character and you're there and you're living it and it was just so out there you know when it happened you were just like hang on what the fuck you know what I mean like you can't just kill off his bleed you know what uh so that 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 initially that that hit was probably much harder the one thing and I'm gonna think this is gonna be a running team for whenever I'm on is fuck Tommy <laughs> because he so quickly is kind of like Joel come on like she's dead you know like the way he's just trying to say Joel don't what the fuck, mate? He's holding his fucking... Th- she just got shot. Yeah. He's holding her there and he's just trying to convince him, like, it's a lost cause here. Fuck off. Pick the body up. Pick the legs up. We're carrying her on. Fuck you, Tommy. Just this I, version of Tommy. I, the I game love Tommy is sound. I, I love that. I think it was, like, her gasps and then it cuts over to Tommy and he's just like, she's gone and then it cuts back to her and then she is gone. I thought that was really well done. I, lo- I yeah, love that. it just that paints bit. him as a prick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two things going on here. Yeah. I I I I get you, Kev. I, I'm on the same page because he kind of goes, Joel, and you can hear her sobbing, but at, when he says Joel, you then listen and she's not so and there's no yeah. sound. And that lack of sound tells you everything you need to know before the camera even cuts back. And then because we know what's happening, we're not trying to take in her as much, but we're now looking at Pedro Pascal and his mm. reaction. And that's where we need to go. It's so massively, it's such a little thing that's massively directed, but also I know what's going on. Cause I know Bruce like nearly two decades at this stage. <laughs> and what's happened here is he's decided I don't like Tommy and everything. He does, <laughs> everything he does. I'm going to say, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm here for, and that's why we have you on the show. So no, running theme, you. I can't wait for it. Like. Yeah, this is it. Like, no matter what he does, like he could, it's like I can't believe they rewrote it to save Tommy. To Tommy save the day, and everyone loves this. And Bruiser has just been like, nah, fuck that guy. Uh, I didn't like him in one scene, so fuck him. <laughs> and I'm right. <laughs> Um, so like uh, if you never played the game one thing that kind of might surprise you off this is that Tess who we meet later on absolute psychopath absolute psychopath like in the game like her default to every problem it's like hey Joel uh, do you have like Joel would be like hey Tess do you have change for 20 and she'd be like we need to murder everyone in this room (laughs) that's not not the solution to the problem presented Tess (laughs) so there was more slight changes here where she's more calculating on one hand she's happy to kind of let the Robert beef go she's almost negotiating with Robert a little bit but then she's kind of manipulating Joel where she's like yeah I kind of do 
when I'm dead. And she knows she can kind of play Joel like that. Um, So she's calculating more than psychopathic. But also as well, the show kind of confirms what the game implied that her and Joel are, are romantically involved. Again, you felt that way in the game, but they never kind of went there. Um, And they didn't need to, but here they, they, they did. And they kind of confirmed that for us. Which again, it's probably just more of an Easter egg to anything because I don't think we're going to see them shifting or anything intense. I think they were just like, we'll, get, we'll throw the game or something here by just answering that question. Um, what are our thoughts on on, on Tess then? Uh, Bruiser, what's that with you? Yeah, uh, she's a manipulator. Obviously, we, you could see it with them there, but she is a good character. She's tough. She's ready. She uh, brings a lot to it. The, clearly negotiating the deals and it, clearly uh, she's a large part of why this journey begins. You know, that way he probably wouldn't have taken the package or Ellie if, you know what I mean, it wasn't for some convincing and, and edging along the way and yeah, help with it. And the, she She's a large part of it, but I do think that we missed a lot of how violent she, she can be or how manipulative or however you want to put it that she can be because as you said, she was trying to smooth shit out instead of trying to punch shit down, you know? Like, yeah, literally every salute, everything. It was like, yeah. oh, we need to walk into this camp, but there's three people, there's three like people who have families and people to go home to. Well, look, we got to murder them. And it's like, Tess, what are you doing? No, we don't. We can just literally, I can, I'm a really quiet crawler. I could just crawl around. No, nope, murder. I'm going to shoot this guy in the head. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we also, we also met Marlene and obviously here the recap I was saying, it's the same person who played her in the game. Um, but a little bit of a different characterization. I think this Marlene is a bit more sassy than in the game. Uh, Kev, what were your own thoughts on, on Marlene? Uh, yeah, I thought she, I thought she was great. There was like, um, she's not. So it's it's once again not in it that much to kind of really um see too much of a difference with her character. Like, yeah, you're right. She's she's a little bit more sassy, but I loved. I do love the fact that it's the same character that's that's doing this. It's it's wonderful. Like as well at that. It's it's something that kind of annoyed me a little bit. I think as the, towards the end of the episode, I felt it was a bit rushed towards the end. Mm-hmm. Them getting Ellie as the cargo from her, and there's another bit I'll talk about towards the end. I thought it was kind of rushed too, but like uh, we haven't really seen too much of too much of her. I think to really judge her too much. Um, but I do love. I just adore the fact that it's the same same actress. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Marlene, um, or sorry, Tess, you're right. Uh, completely agree with you, Bruiser, as well. Like you don't get to see the absolute psychopath that she is before, and then you kind of maybe need a bit of context. But it's 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 nice to kind of see that her like and seeing uh, how emotionless and the, the person that Joel's become, and the t- the two of them are just kind of a match made in heaven, really, for each other at that time, as well as is is kind of great. But uh, you you would like to see a bit more kind of the actual test you see in the games from her. But you probably will. We probably will get to see that in the next episode. Yeah. yeah. Do we um, need a test heavy episode like coming up? We know what's kind of coming next as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I imagine we will. Um, Marlene for me had the best line in it where she's like, bitch, you got one ear. <laughs> and, was... <laughs> and it was that like, was good, yeah. I mean, it was, took me a second of like, is she insulting her? And she's like, no, no, she literally has one yeah. ear. <laughs> is it, was it just me or did it feel like they brushed over the fireflies type of situation a little bit? For yeah, so I was saying it's kind of a little rushed, wasn't it? Like the whole thing just brushed over. Like it's such, it is the game and it's the storyline. It's, it, it is like, it's the whole point of the series is what you're trying to, where you're trying to go, why she's so important and who she's so important for. But it really just felt like, oh, here's a little sign on the wall. And yet they're having some infighting. You should stay off the roads tonight. And then all of a sudden they tried taking the battery and, you know, it just appeared. I felt it just wasn't explained too much or where Tommy is even, you know, like that was brushed over. Yeah, like the Tommy thing as well was just kind of said in a way that gamers understood, but I'd love to know yeah. if people even picked up on, like, well, why did Tommy... Like, if I hadn't played the games, I didn't know the backstory, I'd be like, well, what are they saying about Tommy? Like, why why did he chase her? What's going on? So I agree, there is something there. I imagine the fact that we don't have to... Like, so we, we won't have to go through the levels in the same way that they went through in the game. So there's a lot more, and they did a lot here, like where there's a lot more room for exposition and just telling us the backstory and stuff like that as well so I imagine we're going to get to all of that with the fireflies as time goes on Um, but I agree like yeah there was very much glossed over it's like oh here's the fireflies you know the fireflies and it's like well no I don't I've never (laughs) seen this show before Um, 
I or think if anybody well, hasn't played the game, sorry, if anybody yeah, hasn't played the game, I think that might have been very, very rushed for them. They're like, what the hell is this? Or who are they? Yeah. Well, especially um, considering how important they they, yeah. they are to Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and kind of you need to kind of believe in them or you need to kind of have feelings around them. You really, really do. Yeah. Um so I I did like one bit though where it's like uh, your man walks up to Joel in the yard and Joel is just like if you tell me to go looking for the light I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna break your jaw yeah. <laughs> like, it's like a badass yeah. comment like. I did, I I've never seen Pedro Pascal play a proper like again in the Mandalorian yeah obviously look he is badass but like you don't see him as the badass you know what I mean in the Game of Thrones he's very like he's very charismatic he's flamboyant as well though as well like he does have badass chops but like I've never seen him play a straight just like tough like manly man type you know what I mean mm. Um, he plays it very well he does it and, and, and I didn't know if he would be able to but he, he nails it I spoke there about the kind of flying through levels of the game. And that's the way we're going to think of it as well. Cause we're like, they are, there are scenes where like, even the last scene, like, it's like, I hate that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where the, the guys are looking for you and you don't have the, the proper weapons or the proper skill and you haven't fought enough in the game to be able to navigate it. So you have to kind of bluff it the first time you play it. Um, They do fly through those levels and that makes sense. Again, I'm totally fine with it. Um, But one thing that I found interesting listening to the podcast was actually there's only nine episodes in this season. There's, and you may notice that in HBO shows, there's usually 10. There was supposed to be 10 originally. This, what we got as the opening episode is actually two episodes mashed together. The original ending of the first episode was supposed to be Joel dumping the child's body. Um, and then you were supposed to be left on that. And the kind of the revelation is, look how much Joel has changed. But HBO actually stepped in and the guys gave them credit for this. They're like, this is why you need good partners because they stepped in. They said, yeah, like people might just think that's too bleak and not come back. You need to actually give them something to hope for and root for and a plot and, and a momentum for it. So I feel that they did well, but like there is a lot that we have to kind of process there and important stuff did fall by the wayside. How do you guys feel that they mess that balance like going with the two episodes and one because we've covered like a, a chunk of the game here yeah they kind of had to right because as you said it would have been too bleak I was only talking about the road today don't know if you ever read the book or seen the movie um, but it's a post-apocalyptic uh, post-apocalyptic story that's very bleak and it's bleak in the middle and it's bleak at the end and it's just bleak the entire way through and I was telling one of the lads I was like, like what was the fucking point I said I read that book and I watched the film. What the fuck was wrong with me? You know that way? Like, it was just nothing good came of it. And if you didn't, if it just ended with where it was, with the daughter dies and he's throwing a fucking child's body in the, the gimmick, why Why would you tune in again for this depression? You know that way? At least now you have some hope. You've got to have hope, right? Like a match, like a wrestling match or whatever else, you know? You get your shine. The shine is the daughter being, being so great. You get the cut off with the death and it's, devastatingly heal and there's no hope and there's no comeback and then hang on is there a bit of hope are you gonna go try and find Tommy what's the story with this girl is yeah. she so there's your hope spot and you gotta end on a hope spot right? especially at the start because if you end it too bad why would you come back yeah no that makes sense Kev your That's own thoughts great great point Um, yeah I, if, if for, for an opening episode like that you do need like you do need the hope if it's for me, and I love these kind of movies, um, like The Mist, where it just ends horrifically. Um, I I do think there's a there's there's something kind of just brutal about that as well that I kind of I, I kind of like like as well when when movies kind of just go real left field and be like, no, this this doesn't end great, and you're just gonna have to live with that. But for for something like this, for and for something like it's a HBO show, they're gonna get. I think it was like was a four point five mil they got last night. I think it was. Yeah. You need, you need to get, you need to get that audience back again next week, and you, and you do, you do need the hope. But at the same time, Game of Thrones episode one ended with Bran falling out of a window. So and he was really annoying. So I was happy as well. <laughs> you just don't like kids in Game of Thrones, like that's. I don't think so. Yeah, I think I've got an issue there. To be honest with you, I've got to look into that before that. In contrast to Sarah. Craig Madsen spoke of Ellie's reaction to seeing Joel being violent. You may remember Sarah, like when Joel 
just killed the granny straight in front of her. Was like, what the fuck? You just killed her. And she was yeah. shocked. She'd never seen her dad like that. Whereas Ellie looked and the words that they used to describe it was activated. She looked excited. She looked kind of like, oh, this like this is something different. Like at seeing Joel get so violent protecting her um, for the very first time. And they spoke about how their connection may be stronger because they almost have that level of in common whereas maybe that was a disconnect for Joel and Sarah and in that way they may be more dangerous and maybe a toxic relationship and kind of we'll explore that as time goes on the last of us definitely doesn't shy away from that that topic like um and also as well it kind of made me think about violence in this because this is when you're playing the game you're very much, you've lived in these characters' shoes, you've felt how these characters felt because Sarah feels like your daughter and you've experienced that happening, you know? So you you really feel it in a way so that when you see the characters be violent, you're doing that as a kind of wounded Joel, you know what I mean? And you're playing that out as well. So you don't think about it as much, but The Last of Us obviously will make you think about it as time goes on. It'll put in these little inflection points and these questions after and it's like, did you need to do that? And then you're like, oh my God, I'm a monster. Um, <laughs> it's going to be very different though, watching this on television because now we're passive observers to the violence. So now when we see Joel do something fucked up, we're not Joel and we haven't gone through what we have. So it's a lot. It's going to be a lot easier for us to go, whoa, dude, that's fucking weird. Do you think that there may be space for them to go a bit shades of grey with Joel and Ellie in the... Again, there's there's questions. And one thing I kind of want to ask people as time goes on, especially people who've never re- played the games before, is are Joel and Ellie good? Are they good people? And uh, there's no good answer to that. There's no spoilers in that as well. Like, I can ask that question safe and not have spoiled anything. We know that because we'd have a full debate about it if we could talk about the entire plot and probably all come away with slightly different opinions. Um, do you think that the TV show is going to explore that and 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 that side of things, Kev? What do you, what do you think yourself? Um, like you saw the little bit of like the start of that, I think, with Joel when they drove past that family when they were in the truck, and he was just like, "No, they'll someone else will get them." And there's like there's a bit of a there's that selfishness, and there's like a survival instinct there though as well. And it's just it's apocalypse rules, baby, where, where it's like some of the some of the decisions but like you're right like it's decisions you do in the game but it's going to be interesting to see yeah what what how that is how that's going to play out as well it's like you said with the, the whole toxic relationship thing as well it's like they need each other and in terms of surviving in this world they need that violent streak and with each other but is it and it's it's necessary for them to survive but is it healthy though as well so that's going to be a really interesting arc i think to explore one thing actually just to go back to is all with that shot where it it kind of shows ellie activating yeah where she looked like nearly like batman in a silhouette with that flash of lightning just illuminate her and like the look of her like joy nearly in her face was just amazing like as well yeah (laughs) love that like I, and terrifying too, because like you're like, oh, a kid shouldn't be like reacting to this in this way. Like that that's something that Bella Ramsey is bringing to it. Like that's yeah. new. That's completely new. And Bella Ramsey, I think, is going to be very, very good if they're going to play that kind of Ellie. Where is mm-hmm. she a bit twisted? Is she a bit like? Is there something there? We love her, but is there something wrong with her? Or is there something kind of broken in there? And it, it makes sense if there is. We can totally empathize when we learn her story and stuff like that as well. But like that, that's that's a really interesting character wrinkle. What are your own thoughts, Bruce? Yeah. It's just on what you touched there on with Bella and uh, is she playing it with a broken, you know, slightly broken and doing her own twist on it and how I said, you know, oh, bitch and uh, earlier on about the Game of Thrones character. That's my half my fear, though, is that I am emotionally invested in these characters and I like the characters that were created and portrayed in the video game more so than most television shows I've ever watched. Yeah, So you have complete artistic rights to put your own spin on things, but will your own spin make me have no sympathy for you? And will that spin make me go, well, she's a sadistic bitch there. Did you see her fucking spoil when he had to do that shit? He had to do what he had to do because he's that situation's explained. Her smile isn't much so. Are they good people? You asked earlier on. I don't think Joel's not a good person anymore. You can't be. You can't go through the situation you went through. Deal with this thing 20 years later and, and be a good person. You're just not. You're broken. You're twisted. You're fucked up. And that child as well, unfortunately, is the same. She she grew up in that orphanage, wasn't it? Or, or uh, the, you know, she's not right either. So, no, you're dealing with two completely toxic people already, completely broken, forced to go together. But 
where you get sympathy and you fucking need sympathy in this show and the storyline to have this emotional connection to both of the characters. I think uh, Pedro, the, the, all of the acting, it's nothing but sympathy, right? It's like, oh my God, mate, you've lost everything. Fuck. I, I'm like, I my heart aches for you. You're a bit of a spoiled bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, and I don't know if I'm going to get that sympathy arc that I need to get to l- love it as much as I love the game version. I know it's different. It ain't p- bit for a bit, but that's just slightly my fear. It was a great scene. I look class. He's a dead right. Was it my Ellie though? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. do I want to see a different version of that girl? You know that way? I don't know. Here we go. It begins right now. Hashtag not my Ellie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, very, very good point. An interesting point. I think to be fair, I like this is made by the creator of it, of it, and it's also made by a super fan. I don't think they want to spin it too much, but I think they may want to kind of just widen it. And they have, yeah, and they've done that. It's just the subtleties, though. You know that way. Yeah, you know yeah, yourself. Yeah. It's the subtleties and facials, and the, the subtleties that you're not saying that make you a an incredible actor and great at your profession but just my turn you slightly you know that way you yeah. might go mm, i don't know about that yeah. like and that's how i took that i took that yeah great scene acting done fantastically shot incredibly mm, i don't know about that i don't know yeah. if it's just that or, you know what i mean that was a bit and that, that's where i walked away with from that part yeah I think if they do left behind and and it looks by all indications yeah. they're gonna, yeah, I think that's are, gonna be yeah. that's gonna be what I, I don't think anyone's gonna. Yeah, I think that's gonna get us where we need to be when it comes to Ellie. Um, yeah. guys, great chat, loving it already. I could probably go for like three hours. You want to get in? One, oh, more I have go one question for you, Lex. So okay, I just thought about this area. Joe is because he's a boat Resident Evil fan. So I come for I, I played Resident Evil, big fan of it. Joel is a leading man or Leon Kennedy. I, I'm Leon all the way. I'm I'm Resi two for life. Yeah, my, it's more, like you especially have more the OG of a one. connection to yeah. Okay, and, and yeah, uh, I, I think it's just he's, he's such a rookie and a, an absolute goober that uh, I I love like in those games. <laughs> <laughs> I think you gotta go for me a two to win a fight and like yeah, yeah Joel would Joel would totally emasculate Leon. <laughs> Leon would wet himself within seconds of meeting Joel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's that is one thing I noticed. Um, when when the Tommy and and uh, Joel and Sarah get separated, it's Resident Evil 2's opening where the the, yeah. the the tanker goes through and the, and Claire and Leon get separated. And I was like, is that a little nod to that? I love it's, it. It's uh, the exact same thing. Yeah, that was great. I love it. I love it. Uh, guys, amazing chat. So I could probably do this for like three more hours, but look, we have several more weeks to do it as well. Mm. Um, so guys, but before we go, I, I don't want to give away any spoilers or context, but I do want a one word response for this. Okay. Just so a nod to the gamers listening and, and people who know, but again, we won't give any context for anyone who doesn't know one word response for this. What part of the game are you most looking forward to seeing in this season? Kev. Can I get two? Well, like, if you need two words, yeah. If it's not a one word or something, but, like, yeah, no context. Oh, well, gymnasium. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. And machete. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's... that's two that. different scenes, but, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bruiser. David. You creep. <laughs> no, you know why. You know when. You know why. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking two as well. Um, one is university. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think the world is going to lose their fucking minds if they do that, right? Um, and the other one is, I think, I think everyone will agree with this. It's the easy answer, giraffe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that is, that's yeah. a wonderful yeah. one. It goes without saying. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, look, pleasure. Can't wait to have more discussions. Thank you so much for joining me at uh, the two Kevins. And we're going to keep this up every week uh, throughout the series. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to have more chats. Thank Cheers, you. lads. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Fuck Tommy, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, see you.